I don't know what's better, seeing the home runs or hearing a sea of San Diegans for the first Both. time in like two years. <laughs> Both. What a night, right? A walk-off home run for the uh, Padres reopening. No better way to celebrate than that. Good morning, everyone. On this Friday at 6 a.m., I'm Eric Connor. I'm Stella Escobedo. We are going to begin with this, our heat. You are being asked to cut your power use for a second day as this extreme heat continues. I know we were saying it was going to end at 10 p.m. last night, but no, one more day. The goal is to decrease demand on the power grid and avoid any outages. Yeah, so this flex alert was going to take effect today from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And Governor Newsom signed an emergency proclamation to allow power plants to ramp up operations if necessary. And Netta has a check on that hot forecast now. Yeah, it's another day of hot, hot weather. So especially, of course, inland with the 90s in your forecast again, triple digits for the deserts. I mean, places like Palm Springs got all the way up to 123. I mean, just think about how hot that is. That tied their all time records. Rego broke records at 118 yesterday. Today we'll get very close to that yet again. We are starting with these overcast skies. As you see, we do have a coastal eddy that is formed as you see it over Mission Bay, and then it's extending along our coastline, not as far inland towards Mount Woodson. I'm seeing it break apart already from this camera view, which is good news. Hopefully you won't run into too much of that patchy fog. Let's hope it does not delay the US Open again this morning. Uh, they are set to start around 645. So our heat wave continues triple digit return for inland spots. I'll explain where exactly you'll get that hot and then that trough will bring cooling. So yes, cooling is in sight. All right, Jenny, how are you doing? Uh, the roads are actually really quiet. Not much has changed in the bulk of the county. The bridge is fine. Travel times are fine. No crashes here in this particular section of the map that you can see. However, if I move you on over to the north, we are dealing with a couple of them. South on the five at Bass alone, that crash is off to the shoulder. We've got crews there, no major backups. And then over at Avenida Magdalena, this is on that northbound commute. We had a crash early this morning, so crews are there. They're off to the shoulder. They're blocking that fourth lane, just doing their due diligence and cleaning up any debris associated with it. Back to you. Jenny, thank you. This morning, a popular entertainment spot is at the center of a police investigation. Police are investigating a shooting at Dave and Buster's that happened overnight. This morning, we are hearing from a witness about what happened here in News H. Chris Grow live in Mission Valley with the latest. So we know homicide detectives are there, but we don't know yet if this is a homicide. Yeah, we don't. And, and oftentimes, you'll see homicide detectives come out to shootings like this in which someone is shot, though that doesn't necessarily mean that that person was killed. We still don't know the status of at least that one person that we saw taken to that hospital, presumably shot here uh, in what happened in this chaotic scene. But we are seeing less plainclothes detectives. We do still see this entire area uh, completely taped off, and you could still see a lot of that damage there to the area. But let's rewind here and tell you what we do know. We know that this shooting happened just shortly before 11 p.m. We know that Dave and Buster's was open at the time. Customers were inside, but what's still unclear is if this gunman was a customer, if this was someone uh, who was either in some sort of a, a fight here uh, within the, the establishment or anything like that. Any type of cause, we still don't know. We also don't know if this gunman is in, his, is in custody or potentially is still on the run. We are still waiting to hear back from the San Diego Police Department. Uh, we have not been able to confirm anything other than the fact that, that those were homicide detectives here on scene. But what we have been able to hear from are the witnesses that were here last night, uh, especially this man and his girlfriend who had to scramble to get to safety during the shooting. We crawled all the way uh, to the other side of the counter so he couldn't see us. Um, but then we also saw this dark little nook. So uh, we went in there, that nook, and uh, it was a tiny little room covered with a curtain, and uh, two of the employees are back there. So they luckily shared the spot with us. Yeah, and you can only imagine just how scary, how chaotic that was. The glass shattering, those gunshots ringing out. And then, as he pointed out in that conversation as well, too, really tough to understand how many shots were fired because of the potential for echoes and things like that. He believes anywhere between three to four shots, though. That's his estimation. We are still waiting on official word. And, of course, also waiting to find out exactly uh, ex uh, the status of that person that was taken to the hospital that we saw loaded in that ambulance and where that gunman is. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you. Hopefully the police will update us uh, soon on that. Meanwhile, new pandemic guidelines now allow fully vaccinated employees to go maskless in the workplace. 
Cal OSHA voted 5 to 1 to align itself with the state and the CDC. Governor Newsom signed an executive order to make the changes immediate. Employers are also required to document who is vaccinated if they are skipping their masks. Uh, people can self-report as well if they are vaccinated or not, not necessarily having to show um, their documentation. Uh, the Padres may have finally got the spark that they needed to turn things around. You think it has something to do with the 40,000 people there? Well, they certainly put on a show, <laughs> and I think they really showed up, and they wanted to hear what 40,000 fans going crazy sounded like again, and they got it last night. Yeah, they treated a full-capacity crowd to a wild back-and-forth game, and it ended with a big bang. Take a look. In the air to left field for Victor Caratini. In to a sea of San Diegans. There you go, Victor Caratini with that walk-off home run to send the Friar faithful into a frenzy. They beat the Cincinnati Reds 6-4. Tonight's game starts at 7-10 at Petco Park. And coming up in the next half hour, we'll give you the full experience from last night's roller coaster game. Love hearing those fans, full capacity crowd going nuts for our Friars. It was like one after another, right? It was awesome. It was great. Hey, the U.S. Open is back at Torrey Pines for the first time in 13 years. Yes, today is day two of the tournament. And News 8's Jake Gariani live with a recap of opening round as well as what we can expect here today. How's it going? And Jake, it looks uh, not quite as foggy as it was out there yesterday. Hi, Stella and Eric. Yeah, I was going to bring up the point. Chris Groh was out here yesterday, and you guys saw him out. Well, I don't know if you saw him out here yesterday. Yeah, the <laughs> fog was much more dense yesterday than it is today, so we'll definitely get going at the normal time today. But that fog did cause that hour and a half delay yesterday, which pushed everything back, and, and people haven't finished their first round. There's still a handful of golfers that need to finish their first round today. They will tee off before everybody else finish that first round, and then we'll get the second round going. One of those guys is Louis Ustase, and he's tied for the lead. He's still got a couple of holes to play. So by 8 a.m. today, we may have a new leader. And if you've you know been out here at Torrey Pines and you've played it before in the morning, you know that, that fog is often out here. Mm -hmm. Not as bad as it is yesterday, but you know the difference between the three of us playing Torrey Pines in the fog and uh, PGA players playing <laughs> it for the championship is, a, is quite a big difference. Yeah, they know yeah. They, they have a lot better idea where their ball is going to go in the fog than we do. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, they were going to start really early at 6.45 in the morning, and then they pushed it back eventually to like 8.30, right? So, uh, Jake, Phil Mickelson, uh, we heard him talk about the distraction yeah. yesterday from spectators, their cell phones, using their cameras. Mm -hmm. A little more than yeah, a and that's season. kind of the reality of where we're at these days is, look, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody's got a camera, and the fans haven't been out here in a while, so you kind of understand a little bit of those mistakes, but I was following Phil and Xander in that group around 12, 14, 15, and two times I heard a phone go off, once in Xander's backswing, mm. and then Phil, right wow. as he was getting ready to hit his tee shot, he had to step back as the phone went off, so it is a friendly reminder, guys, that to turn your phone off you're gonna come, if you're going to come out here and watch some golf again. The fans haven't been out here for a while. They're still catching up to it all, but I get it. Look, this is a major tournament. This is the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. Every shot matters, so this right. is very important. And I thought Phil was pretty casual about it. Listen to what he had to say. And, and again, it's part of the game, like it's part of professional golf. You have to be able to let that go and not let it get to you and be able to kind of compose yourself and regather your thoughts and so forth. But um, they certainly didn't do me any favors either. Yeah, I think we'll give the fans a little break. You know, they haven't been out in a while either. So, um, but if they could silence their phones and, you know, the, the photos and everything, that'd be great for us. Again, a good reminder, not every golfer is as chill as Xander Shoffley just saying, yeah, that'd be good for us. Now, this is very important to these guys. So remember, silence those cell yeah. phones mm -hmm. and, uh, and be sure to give these guys a chance out there. Yeah, and Xander, uh, you know, seems like he's pretty happy with his performance so far. Absolutely. You know, Xander came out yesterday and played a great round two under, which is a great score for this course. It's only going to get a little bit harder as we move into the weekend. So Xander right there tied for fourth at two under after that 69. And think about this with Xander. He's played well in major tournaments, tied for second twice at a Masters. He's also tied for third. So he has been right there on the precipice of winning a major tournament. How great would it be if he could win his first major tournament right here in his backyard? You know, of course, he grew up playing. I mean, that would be special for him and, and all of us fans watching as well. That's what we're hoping for. Oh, it's been so exciting. <laughs> uh, Jake, thank you so much. And a good reminder again, silence your phones. Right. It's not that hard. Let's it's help really out not our that hometown, hard. Help out our hometown guys here. Right.
Jake, thank you. Good to see you. Um, let's go ahead and check in with Netta now. Doesn't look like there's much fog there this morning, which is good, but yeah. uh, some still. Yeah, it's sitting up a little higher today. I do want to say, who calls people these days anyway, right? Keep your phone on silent. They'll text you. You'll be fine. Uh, also, Jake is dressed appropriately for a day that is about to get pretty warm. I like his flowy shirt. It'll be nice. Short sleeves, that's the way to go if you're heading out to the U.S. Open. Uh, of course, it's starting off overcast, but as you saw in Jake's live shot way different than how it looked with Chris Gro yesterday where you can barely see behind him. Uh, so our visibility is okay. We do have marine layer clouds at Coastal Eddy that's still right there off our coastline and it is being pushed inland. But these numbers are a lot better than the low numbers we had yesterday where visibility was down to about a third mile in places like Kearney Mesa downtown. So now we're five to six miles. Fallbrook though, that's where you're feeling that saturation going on a little mist in the air for you. And that's where that fog is fairly dense. Uh, relative humidity numbers also want to point this out because right there in La Jolla, right at the golf course, humidity numbers are higher, uh, around 95 or so percent at this hour. So that's that moisture that could end up on the ball, which does mean they have to change up their game, as we heard yesterday from Chris's live shot. Here's a look at the temperatures for the U.S. Open, reaching the mid to upper 60s by the noon hour. So it should be a little more comfortable there, not as hot as yesterday, but still, of course, above average conditions. And